Hi, my name is Bill Calhoun and I am a high school physics teacher and I want to reflect today on a uh, on something that happened very early in my teaching career. Um, my first teaching job was at a private school, um, a prep school if you will, in Connecticut. Um, and the, the students who went there were largely from uh, very privileged families. And the school had enough money to have a really lovely facility for teaching physics. And there was this big room that was chock full of equipment that had been uh, collected over the years and bought over the years. I mean, really big room. And I just thought I was in heaven because among the things in this room was a big box of springs. The time arrives in any physics course where you have to talk about springs. And the easiest way to introduce springs as a topic is to bring out a big box of springs and have the students play with these springs. So here's what I mean by a box of springs. Um, this is just a collection of springs I rounded up in the house here. Um, of course, I live in a house where I have springs lying around. And, um, and by giving students springs like this to play with, we can begin to talk about some of the characteristics of springs. We can talk about, you know, how how difficult it is to stretch the the spring or or, um, or to bend the spring. Some springs are used to bend. Some springs you pull. Some springs you push. Um, some springs are quite stiff. And here's one here. This one's pretty pretty stiff. Um, you know, why is that? Why are some springs different than other springs? And, and what does that mean for how that spring will be used um, in a situation? And, and what does it mean for um, understanding the physics of a spring? As a kid, I grew up in um, what some people consider a, a working class neighborhood, although um, I might call it middle working class uh, now, just to... Um, if I were to categorize it. And I, um, I grew up with a dad who every Saturday would fix the house. And he had tools. He didn't have a lot of tools, but he had a little bit of a shop. Um, and I remember as a kid watching him work on things. I learned about tools by watching him fix things. And he had down in the basement all these coffee cans, Maxwell House. And these coffee cans were full of screws, nails, nuts, and bolts, and springs, um, and, and countless other things. Um, and of course, I was allowed to go and play with all of this stuff. And so I just sort of assumed that this was every young boy's experience uh, was playing around with magnifying glasses and steel ball bearings and, um, you know, I'm using a razor blade to cut golf balls in half and, you know, um, playing with springs and, you know, all that kind of stuff that I just, that just to me was normal. So when I brought this box of springs out to my students, oh, they loved the idea of playing with springs. And so I just, I, there were so many springs. It was a magnificent box of springs and there were so many springs I was able to hand them out to the whole class and everybody could play with the springs. And and they did, and, they, and it, it worked out really well. But it, it was only afterward that I began to understand that they'd never done this before in their lives. Uh, they'd never had this experience. Um, and, and I thought that that was kind of amazing. I thought, wow, really? Um, it wasn't until much later that I came to understand that not everybody's dad spent Saturdays working on the house. And if, if your dad or your mom or your older brother or older sister didn't work on things with tools and stuff, you would never be experienced, uh, you would never be exposed to this. So the lesson I learned from this was to not assume that people had had prior experience, um, especially not the prior experience I had had. Um, just don't assume that, and, and if it turns out they have that experience, then great, then you can work with that. Um, it still hadn't occurred to me until much later in my life, the class issue of um, an upper middle class or a even more privileged family um, just wouldn't have 
um, Maxwell House coffee cans full of nuts and bolts lying around the house for kids to play with. <laughs> so um, they just wouldn't. So um, anyway, now the flip side of this is I had an experience um, working in more recently, very recently, I had an experience working in um, an inner city school and this was a, a STEM school, science, technology, um, engineering and math, there we go. And, um, and so I was teaching physics in this school to students who um, were um, for the most part pretty poor. Um, and again I, I knew to not expect them to have played with a box of springs at some point in their life. Um, and so when I brought out the box of springs this was a much smaller box of springs, but still, I rounded up everything I could get my hands on and, and brought it out for the students. And here I was surprised to learn that they weren't interested in even touching them. And they would say that. i say, oh, no, I'm not, oh, those look, uh, no, I'm not touching those. No, nah, it's okay, Mr. Calhoun, I don't need to play with those. That's all right. I, let someone else, you know, um, they really... They did not have that sense of play when it came to physical things, physically manipulating things, that sense of play that I had grown up uh, with, and they just did not have that sense of play. And again, I was like, wow, 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 wow. Um, so I kind of made them play <laughs> with the springs, um, and because uh, I, I felt it actually was an important way to introduce them to the physics of springs. But still, um, it opened my eyes to the difference that the background that a child grows up in uh, can make in a classroom, and that one has to be sensitive. I'll never forget the day when um, one of the teachers at the school um, introduced me to A Framework for Understanding Poverty, uh, a book by uh, Dr. Ruby Payne. Um, and this book suddenly allowed me to see what these experiences were about, these and other experiences as well. Um, with the students I was teaching, um, the, uh, the, the urban kids that I was teaching, um, I, it really was pointed out to me in this book that um, these are people, because they don't own their own homes, so they don't, uh, they often have to move from place to place, and they don't when they move, they don't carry a lot with them. Um, they don't have coffee cans full of nuts and bolts. They don't have basic tools. They might not even have a pair of scissors. Um, so, um, um, people in these circumstances just don't collect these things, so they don't have a lot of experience with them. But they do learn to solve certain kinds of problems in very clever ways. So that can be employed when working with these students. I'm very fortunate right now to be working in a school um, that I love. It's a technical school. Um, as you can imagine, it's a good fit for me. And um, all of these students have had experience messing around with things. Uh, many of them, by the time they come to my school as freshmen, have already learned how to pull an engine apart in a car. Um, they're, they're very clever with things, very good with their hands. Um, if I ask them, you know, has anyone here ever played with magnifying glasses? Um, all the hands go up in the room or you know if I bring out a box of springs they're like hey yeah great you know they like there's they're not afraid to play with the springs on the other hand um, they have plenty of prior experience that they can use to relate to the, what I'm trying to bring to them um, and I have to chuckle because these students come from a background almost identical to mine and I think, oh, there you go. There's, so I, of course I still try not to assume anything, um, but it's just kind of interesting to see these kinds of differences in something as small as um, playing with a box of springs.